Good afternoon, it's Sunday today. John went to town yesterday to look for Eddie, uh, not to take the coat down, uh, to try and find him, to arrange for t when I can go down and meet him because I wanted to video it. Um, and couldn't find him anyway, but he was talking to others that knew him and we've decided against this. No, I told you I was... Um, I was giving them this coat. I was giving them this coat. Well, I haven't spoke to homeless people that are down there. And as you know, <clears throat> Eddie's in a wheelchair. He's 62, I believe someone said. He's in a wheelchair, so he's vulnerable. And it was pointed out to us that if we give him a good coat like that, a good make like that, it could be stolen off him and he'll end up with none when he's out. Or... <clears throat> No disrespect to anyone, especially Eddie. Someone could, could persuade them to sell it, the mother. So what we've done, we've decided to keep it because I have got family that it'll fit and it'll fit myself. Come to think of it as well, because it, it does go on me. But I haven't forgot them and I'm not going to leave them without a coat. I have got them this one, which I think will be a lot better for them as he's in the wheelchair and he's vulnerable and that and the dark nights so I thought oh by the way this is my outfit of the day brown them brown pants with the fluffy right down to the bottom and I went to my church um, Christmas sale yesterday Christmas fair and I got these look you see them never hardly been worn Got them for myself. Get on with the story. So we've got Eddie this, which I think will be a hell of a lot better for him, as it's got high vis on, because he's in a wheelchair, isn't he? It's still padded. It's still waterproof. And it's warm. As I say, and I think this will fit him better than the other one, because he seems a lot smaller than me. And that coat fitted me, didn't it? So... <clears throat> I'm not going to leave them without a coat. But it did make sense with what <clears throat> the lad and girl was saying to John about the other one being a, a deer a coat. It could get stolen off and he's a target. So I'm going to take that down today and see can we see him. Have another look. John couldn't see him yesterday, as I say. <clears throat> So he's still got that coat and he's still got this. This is the warm fleecy one. He's still got that as well. And I also picked this up in the Christmas fair. Look how good this coat is. And I know a girl who this will fit. Not a homeless girl. But someone I know. Oh, this will fit lovely. As she works hard. And... Um, Sadly, has hardly ever got a penny to herself with paying bills. So that padded coat, lovely thick padded coat. It's got a hood in. Got a hood on it for when it's raining. So, and as I say, I know a certain person this will do. I did get a, a coat not long ago. I, I I don't go out and buy them new. I've got loads of my own coats, second hand out the shops, as you know. My blue one, what you don't like on me. This is dead heavy, this. Very heavy, thick padded one. As you can see. So I thought, that'll, that'll do it. And when I got myself this, <coughs> Pound. Got loads of these, like but no. One of them. But when I'm wearing my dress, when I go away, I can wear this over it, can't I? I can wear that over it. Or I can wear it. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. These are out the Christmas pay in the church, the local church. 
I can have it like that if I want. Let's see what other way, maybe. Let's have a look. What other way could you wear that? No doubt I'll find a way. Let's see. No, no. Can't show. No. Don't be daft, Catherine. Okay. No. Not on the back like. So no. Give that a give that a miss. Give that a miss, definitely. So it will probably be like that. I'll be wearing it. Remember when I went to me the, the, my friend's wedding in Wales and I wore that other one like this. Similar to this, wasn't it? I must have about four of them, you know, but I couldn't resist it for the pound. It was 50p actually and I doubled it up. I said the yeah, there's a pound because they were shutting. So I thought, just give it them. Yes, so I'm, I'm, as I say, I'm pleased with that myself. But it did make sense. And I got Eddie this as well. <coughs> but, oh, Betty, no. <coughs> I think the dog's done a whoopsie on the carpet again, Betty. You better go and clean it up. It's all over the floor over there, Betty. <coughs> oh, I got myself a nice little coat when I was out as well. And I'm hoping to wear it today because it keep me warm, Betty. Anyway. I got him that, but I thought on, he's an Evertonian and he wears an Everton hat, so I can't see him wearing this, but I'll give him it, because it's no use to me. <laughs> Not unless I want to wear it like that when I'm out in the boat, I don't know, I might just do that, you know, um, for a change. Shut your face, Catherine, and get on with it. So yes, I will take them down today it stopped raining and I thought this morning in bed as I say John went to look yesterday for him but he couldn't see him down Matthew Street and I said it's no use us going early in the morning I said because he won't be out till late afternoon more than likely for when the visitors are walking along Matthew Street that's the time you catch him and if if you're ever out and about yourself and you see a man in a wheelchair and he's got the yellow high vis here, you'll know it's Eddie, won't you? So it's a win-win. Stop and have a chat with him and tell him all about him, that I've spoke about him on YouTube. Um, I think that's all I, I, I got yesterday. You know, the kids got loads of things. It was smashing little little church fair, it was. Father Christmas, naturally. I couldn't resist it. I got me photograph took with Father Christmas and my granddaughter. We weren't expecting to go. John passed this church and said, there's a Christmas fair on because my granddaughter stayed here the night. I thought, oh, we are. There's somewhere to take her. She's 10. And I don't think she was up to the, you know, Father Christmas going round there. But when she got there, she was up for it because I gave her money to go and have a go at the um, Lucky Dip. <coughs> I say it was all for the church funds. I said, go and have a go with the lucky dip and that and the uh, the other thing, the Tom Bowler thing. And she said, now I'm getting a queue for Father Christmas so I don't lose me, pl me place. <laughs> so she was up for that. I let her go in first. And as it, uh, everybody knows me around here. Everyone knows me in Liverpool sort of thing. Well, near everyone. And um, when I went in, he went... Oh, I haven't seen you for a long time since you were a little girl when my granddaughter was. Because he knew me. <laughs> so I went, oh, yeah, when you left the baldy doll on the end of my bed when I was a little five-year-old girl and you left the doll like that. With not a stitch on on my bed. Remember Santa? He said, oh, I do, I do. So while Alexis was amazed at that, amazed at it, <coughs> that it, Santa Claus remembered me from when I was a little girl. So we, the, t the three of us got our photograph taken, and that Frey, oh, I've just thought on about it. Oh, we have to pick it up today after the mass today. I think the mass is still on. Uh, they picked the photographs up, and they got a free present, and it, 
you just put a donation in going into sale. And it, it, she got a big box of chocolates, selection box of chocolates off them, and uh, the free, free photographs, so it's well worth it, well worth it. So I had to go on all kinds of things and that, the raffles. I don't, the raffle, I've put my phone number on of a winner, winner, I don't, I don't. I had a few goes on of different things as well, you know, like Lucky Dip, you pick a bottle of wine, but £2 ago that was, but never got nothing. But some you win, some you don't, isn't it? So uh, we had a nice little day and uh, I met someone in the bus stop in the village and he said, give me a shout out, I'll shout out Gibbo from the Moss, so I'm giving you the shout out now. And Craig from Kirby, he's always had a me to give him a shout out. Uh, <clears throat> so I've done that now. And um, anything else I needed to tell you? Because I know the minute I stop the video, I'll think, oh, why didn't I tell them that? Let me stop it to think. I know lots of you were saying to me to me about my son doing me back garden and that, and it, I I did when they were ten and twelve years of age. My two youngest lads, I bought them because I brought the kid four kids up on my own. I was my husband was an alcoholic. God rest his soul. He's dead now. Died at age fifty two. Um. Well. Um. I had to bring the four kids up on my own, and I used to sit on a sewing machine. And there was twin <laughs> my best customers, there was twins over the road from where I lived. The uh, Kathy Dobbo's twins, they probably watch this. Uh, Catherine and her name, what was it? The little girls, name, Jane and Catherine, I think the names were. Anyway, I used to, they lived over the road from me and used to play with my kids, with our Marie, my little girl. My little girl, she's 53 now. <coughs> and... <clears throat> Uh, I used to bring them in mine and measure them, measure them. You know them little, you know them little summer dresses with the elastic across the shade and elastic across the. I used to measure them, make two the same, and I'd take them out. Well, I'd make four different, you know, two patterns and two patterns. I'd take them over to the mum and say, "Do you want to buy these cats? I don't have to fit them because they, they had no money then. They had, we had four kids on my own, and she'd go." She tried them on, she go, oh my God, Cathy fit them like a glove. <laughs> I knew they did because I measured them before I took them over. And she'd say, oh my, oh yes, I'll have them off your cat. So there was four dresses I got rid of right away. So that's how I got by. That's how I got by in life. You had to do something, didn't you? And my mother went, God dressed her soul as well. When I was young and I got my first house, when I was pregnant with my uh, eldest lad, who's 57, um, the week before I had them, I won £75. Now, this was 1966, and that's a lot of money. I won £75, a jackpot in a bingo. And <clears throat> I had my name down for the house. So by the time I got me house, I bought all second-hand furniture, three-piece suite, telly, sideboard, bed, all kinds with this £75 to move into this house, even a little carpet, just to make it homey, a lamp, a woman, Joan, that lived by us, she used to sell second-hand things, I used to go to her regular, and I'd say, oh yeah, I'll have that, Joan, I'll have that, she used to get lovely ornaments and everything, and um, my mother used to say to me, if you want something and you can't afford it, well, don't get it, Save up till you can. Do not buy on higher purchase. And I'm happy to say I've always stuck by that. I've always stuck by it. I know a lot of people can't and you can't avoid higher purchase. But I've, I've always been a sort of a, a good manager, a good saver sort of thing. If I wanted something, I'd save up for it. Then I'd go and buy it. And it used to save me hundreds, you know, because you get it on higher pitches, it bloody goes up and up and up, doesn't it? So I learned that trick from my mother. And then, as I say, my two youngest was age 10 and 11, and they naturally wanted pocket money, as did the other two. They were, uh, they were 16 and 18 or what have you. And um, I couldn't keep giving them the pocket money and that. So I went to the market one day, seeing... The second-hand lawnmower, electric lawnmower, as I say. And my nephew, Kevin, God rest his soul, he's dead now. He stripped it down, looked at it, sharpened it, fixed all the wires, everything, tested it, and gave it back to me. And I said to the kids, here's a lawnmower. 
Go out and knock on doors and see that you couldn't do that these days. Go and see, does anyone want the gardens doing? I said, and <coughs> earn your own money. I said, don't be asking me for any pocket money anymore. Earn your own. So they did. They went out only in my road, only in the road where they live, not out the district or nothing like that. <coughs> and half the time I was sitting in the garden watching them anyway. Because you had to, didn't you? And um, they come in and he was over the moon with what they earned. I don't know if it was 12 or 15 pounds, something like that. And they're so excited saying, how much is that, mum, each we've got each and that. And so anyway, I said to them, what did you get? So they're telling me. So I said, well, give me six pounds out of that. And he said, well, that's our money, what for? I said, well, that mow is yours then. But if you don't give me six pounds, every job you do, that mow is mine. So I'll hire it to you. So they paid the six pounds. So I said, that mow is yours. Now, every penny you earn now is between you. So that's how they started. And they're still gardeners to this day. Uh, Paul's done a hell of a lot of flagging for it uh, all over. Uh, turf and Rotobate and you name it. Uh, Paul Martin Landscapes. He's on, as uh, what's he on? Country and that. I think he's on and the Next Door Neighbourhood thing. And Stephen's on YouTube and that, and on the Next Door Neighbourhood thing. And he's as Stephen's Garden Services. So, and the 47 and 49 now. So, <laughs> good mum there. Hey, how's about that then? I taught them something there, didn't I? Get out and earn your own money. Don't, earn, don't live off no one. Earn your own money. So, that's a little insight into me past. So, I'm going now. Lovely to see you. I'm going to get ready and go to town and see can I find Eddie. I didn't want to go too early. It's now. Let me see what time is it. Oh, be handy if I put my watch on, wouldn't it? It's on charge. Don't know what time it is. I think it's about, I think it's about one o'clock. Anyway, I'm going to go to town. I'll have a little trot around. Then we'll go down Matthew Street and see can I find him. By the time you see this, I'll probably be home. Or it might be tomorrow or later on, I'll put it on. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. But I hope you're not um, annoyed with me swapping them coats. Well, it wouldn't matter if you were, because I don't care. I bought them anyway. So <clears throat> it was me that went for them. But it being explained to me, well, not to me, to John, it being explained to him that he could get it stolen off of my target for it because it's a good coat. So that other one is a high vis one. He's in a wheelchair. He'd be seen easily along the road and that with them being in the wheelchair and the dark nights. It's nice and warm, it's padded, so that'll do them. I haven't let them do without, that'll do them. So bye for now, I love you all. Keep sharing with your friends, please, and keep telling everyone, your family and your friends, and say, look at this cranky old woman, <laughs> she'll make you laugh. Oh, you might not, like... But just share with your friends because that helps me a hell of a lot when, when I get new subscribers. And remember, it's free to subscribe. Press the subscribe button on the bottom. Press the bell. Then a thing will say, do you want all notifications? Press all. And every time I post something, you'll get a notification say, she's on again. The old one's on again. Quick, grab a cup of tea. Let's see what she's doing now. Anyway, something like that anyway. So bye for now. I love you all. <whistles> Robin's okay. Collie's okay. Bye for now. Your false tan's all right. I'm all right, don't I? Shut up and get off, okay? Bye for now. <laughs>